Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at the i3 8350K and the 8600K. So it's the, um, but things have changed a little bit. Whereas the old ones, the i3s would have been two cores and four threads. We've now actually just got a proper quad core. And then the i5 would have just been four cores before, but it's now got six cores, but no hyper threading. So the 8700K, the one above, the i7, that's the one with six cores and 12 threads. So they've basically just taken the hyper threading away. So essentially you've got a couple of extra cores on the i3 and on the i5. Now, uh, we, we've done the 8700K, so essentially now this is just so that I've got some numbers in the graphs and that's it. But we did manage to get quite a decent overclock out of both of them actually. So the 8600K, we did manage to get 5.2 gigahertz out of it, 1.35 volts, but we couldn't get that to pass the full batch of our tests. So uh, we ended up having to put it down to just 5.1, but surprisingly, the little quad core did 5.1 as well. Um, and it, they both did 5.1 around the 1.325 mark. Now with the 8700K, 1.3 volts on the sample that I got sent when I first got it, 1.3 volts is as high as I could get before I ran into cooling issues. Because essentially, because of this thermal paste between the, uh, the top of the actual silicon of the CPU and then the IHS, which is the metal bit at the top, the, um, the thermal paste gets kind of overwhelmed and then you can't cool. Uh, quickly enough and it didn't matter whether you had a uh, water cooler on it I suppose it'd be all right if you had um, like liquid nitrogen or something like that but we found around the 1.3 mark was about the limit for that with our specific CPU there are some out there that are slightly better because they've um, had the thermal paste applied slightly better it's just kind of it's another part of the silicon lottery but with the the two new ones um, because they've not got the hyper thread in, a little bit less heat, we did actually notice that they were doing very well with temperatures. So with a H110i GT, which is a Corsair 280 millimeter AIO, we actually managed to keep the temperatures on the i3, they were below 70 degrees, and the hottest core on the i5 was actually 73, but the bulk of the cores were actually down in the uh, high 60s as well. So as far as this is concerned, you could probably, if you were lucky enough to get a sample similar to ours, I'd say that you'd probably be able to get away with, um, as long as you had a decent air cooler, but you could probably get a five gigahertz overclock with a decent air cooler. If you're running an AIO or something like that, and you actually put the time in to make sure that you get the volts as low as you possibly can do and not just smash volts in and then hope for the best, then you'll definitely be able to do it around those sort of volts as well. Obviously, like I said, it can be a bit hit and miss with the silicon lottery and that sort of thing. But if I pop a graph up, and now this is the point where I kind of need to move the camera, but if I pop a graph up, no, we want to go that way, Tom. So if I pop a graph up, then, uh, yeah, I, yeah, that way, yeah. See, I'm, I'm so good at this, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, right, all comfy. Yeah, okay. So uh, power draw, it puts it roughly where you'd expect it at the end of the day. They do really well at stock. Don't forget, when they do boost, one of the things when we do do our testing, the way we did it was OCCT, so uh, it wouldn't have been doing its maximum boost because the maximum boost is only on one core. So uh, it would have been, uh, they would have been running um, uh, around the kind of, um, <coughs> uh, it, they would have been running around the, when you see the clock speeds, we see the first one and it can go up to that. They're normally around that. I think the i3 was like four gigahertz pretty much continuously though, because that doesn't have a boost. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Power draw, really good. Do you know what I mean? They normally are. Even with an overclock, it, it was doing well. And don't forget that's complete system draw and all of those um, uh, parts would have been tested on the same system as well. Although the motherboards will have been different. It's the same memory, it's the same graphics card and that's really where the, the, the difference comes in. Now with Cinebench, the reason why Cinebench is actually quite interesting here is because we benched um, them at 5.1, they actually did better than the uh, 8700K. This is the single CPU graph though, so it's the single threaded graph. This is why this is interesting. If we, if we chucked it into multiple cores, 
that it would be different. But the one thing I do need to say to you is you can go and have a look on the OC3D website at the multi-threaded one, and we have lots of other graphs there as well. You can also pick them apart, cross-reference them. And the other good thing is you can use it as a reference tool because a lot of these programs you can get and you can run and uh, compare them with your own system at home as well. Blender, this is our own custom blender. It's like three million polygons, it's ridiculous. We do a 1080p version, we do a 4K version. And the numbers in the graph are actually the minutes it take, took to uh, render our OC 3D uh, image. And again, they sit quite well in there. The 8600K with the overclock actually snapping at the heels of the 8700K. So that does quite well. But obviously once you smash the 8700K with an overclock, it, it disappears up the graphs. But I think even the baby uh, quad core did quite well here. Um, and then uh, gaming. Now with the gaming, I've put that in there just so that you can see. With the big red graph at the side, that's your Gears of War CPU. Now that did really well again because of the higher clock speed. So that's the difference there. But when we're actually looking at like uh, just frames per second in the games, actually the smaller ones that you want to take, pay attention to. But we sort it with the uh, Gears of War CPU because obviously it's a CPU render. So it, it gives you a good idea there. But the point is, as you can see uh, at the top, that you do even get a little bit of a boost with the uh, extra couple of cores there. But I was quite surprised at, at how well the Quad i3 did against the 8700K just with that extra 100 megahertz on there. Um, now, that you can, obviously, we don't keep the same GPU drivers consistently because, you know, they, they do upgrade. Um, but it's something that you can kind of keep uh, in mind. Yes, I'm doing it. I'm super, you know, like on the ball today with the old camera. But essentially, the i3 uh, for a little baby quad core you know, it's 180 pound, it is quite, you know, it's, it's not a cheap processor. But I think it's more um, accessible now as a gaming CPU than it was before when it was just those two cores with the hyper threading. You get a four gigahertz stock clock speed as well, but please, if you're gonna buy the K-series, then you really do need to give it an overclock to get the best from it. Because as you've seen, 5.1 gigahertz, it's, it's a little barnstormer, really, and it does kind of, give you an awful lot um, uh, if you're willing to put the effort into overclock it. I wouldn't use any of the overclocking tools or like the, the software stuff, you know, like the auto overclock it for you because they're only ever profiles. You'll never know whether it's getting the best from your CPU and it will always be overvolting it as well. So, uh, you know, spend your time, put it in. I've, I'm probably going to be doing a, a guide if you're interested as well. I know I say this all the time, but I think it's definitely gonna happen now. I just need to put some time aside to make sure that I can do it. But when you see with that, with that little i3, for, to go from four gigahertz stock to 5.1 with decent temps, be able to do it on air as well, I think it's a cracking little gaming CPU. The i5, I see if you're going to be doing maybe some light rendering, light Photoshop, that sort of thing, or maybe you're thinking about doing some casual streaming as well. Um, I say casual streaming uh, because uh, although the overclock will do it well, but the, the, the 8700K is really the one where it's going to come into its own with the twitch sort of stuff and the overlays and all that sort of thing. Uh, but the i5 for a casual a uh, guy that wants to do a bit here and there, and he knows he's gonna you know, transcode a film every now and then, those extra two cores, that will be when that will come into play. But again, give it an overclock, you'll get so much better out of it. And the one thing that you do need to realize is the bulk of games that are out there will res respond to a clock speed more than cores. So if you are looking for those extra frames per second, then uh, you may be able to eke a few of them out by um, uh, banging that clock speed up, because that's really the way it's done. I've done stuff before with cores versus clock speed, like with Xeons versus you know non-Xeon parts, and one being at like 3.5 gigahertz, and the other one being at 4.5, 5 gigahertz. Uh, and it, it's the, the, the clock speed that the, the bulk of games always loved. But then again, you, you will need to go and, you know, your favourite game, find a review of your favourite game to see what it needs. Because uh, th there are a couple out there that like cores, but they are very rare. Let's put it that way. But anyway, so 
there's numbers there for you. And that's all this was, is it was a personal kind of thing. I wanted to see how well they overclocked and I also wanted to get the numbers in the graph so that you guys at home get to see the difference. You know, should I go for the i3? Now I've avoided kind of talking about the, the Ryzen's and stuff like that because with the clock speed, that's really where the, the gaming side of it comes in and that's where they will um, predominantly pull in front. Uh, and uh, it's really kind of the, the you, you'll need to kind of balance up your price points. Memory wise, when we were overclocking them as well, I ran the tests at 3200 megahertz, but um, the, when, you, when you do talk memory, by the way, what you do need to think about is uh, people forget, A, that you do have to go in and, and either enable XMP or manually set up your memory on every single CPU and motherboard on the planet because that's just the way they are. So if you have just fitted your memory and you've left it, it's probably running at 2133. Um, but with these, uh, they're the same as the 8700Ks, it's going to come down to uh, your board more than anything, but then uh, also your ability to get in there and tune them as well, because as you push uh, up past 3200 megahertz, things can kind of trip and fall over and need a little bit more of a hands-on approach. 3600 megahertz is dead easy, but if you put them in the right board, you can actually get over 4000 running as well. 4000 megahertz on both of the CPUs is possible. Uh, again, it comes to, it's not a, an overclock though, because this is something that a lot of people seem to forget. If you want 4000 megahertz, then what you do is you buy 4000 megahertz memory, and then you uh, you try and eke that out of your board and your CPU because some boards it's normally is the board in the BIOS which will stop you getting there. Uh, most of the CPUs are absolutely fine. Like I said, these did easy peasy. Uh, so quick memory, it's a little bit of a, a complicated one because I know a lot of people on the um, the competition platform, what they end up doing is they buy lo low end memory and they, they're, they're oh, I'm, I can't get 3200 running. Well, you know, sometimes you, you can get lucky, but it does come down to the silicon lottery again. Uh, and it's not a CPU issue, that low down, it's not a board issue either. It's literally just because the memory, they get binned off and you can get lucky. Uh, but when you're talking about getting to 4,000, thousand megahertz you do need to get something that's been specifically binned for it uh, or be incredibly lucky uh, but anyway we'll leave that because that's a, another video in itself as I said this was just so that we could get some numbers for how well do does coffee like with just four cores and just six cores do and I think they actually did kind of well the temperatures really for me were the thing that I was surprised about the most because not having the hyper threading on there even with the high volts I think they did pretty well, which obviously then means that you can either have a cooler system or spend a little bit less money on your, uh, your actual CPU cooler itself. I'd personally still want to run them with an AIO if it was me personally going to be overclocking them though so that you can get cool and quiet. <sighs> Deep breaths. You never would have guessed I had a coffee. But anyway, that's the quick one from me.